Hi everybody, it's Carrie. Happy Saturday. I am getting my template set up here so I can see if you guys comment. There we are. Okay, so um, today's Saturday sip is uh, going to be a paper pumpkin alternatives. So it might be a little bit longer of a Saturday sip than you're used to, but um, I hope you guys are going to like what I'm doing. I'm kind of excited about it. So say hello. Okay, I don't know what just happened here. Oh my golly, it's like I'm constantly trying to get this. Hi Linda. Trying to get my tablet to do what I think it's supposed to be doing. Hey Adam. Okay, so here we go. So again, I said uh, we were going to talk about paper pumpkin. So I'm just trying to adjust everything. All right, so um, obviously I've been playing with it, but this is a paper pumpkin that you had to subscribe by um, July 10th. And uh, this, I got it pretty fast for me. I mean, sometimes I don't seem to get them until the end of the month. So I got this uh, last last week or the beginning the beginning of this last week so I've had a little chance to play with it so um, these are the beautiful projects that stamp it up has and I will show them to you in just a minute also there's a reminder this one I've seen some sneak peeks you guys want to sign up for paper pumpkin before the um, 10th of August to get this holy cow hi Robin um, so anyway what came in this kit was some linen thread um, some glue dots like normal a little spot of Bermuda Bay, a big package of um, Stampin' Dimensionals, nine of these pretty pool party colored envelopes, this awesome stamp set. Let me see how well you guys can see this. There you go. It's very cute. Actually, the lighting is terrible. Let me do that and see if I can get some better lighting eh, it's okay all right so um, and then it came with die cut sheets I believe there were three of these sheets with the bottles and the um, banner and there's also a label right here there were more of these labels I think there was there was one here um, and then this fun page that has all of these pieces to pop out. We are going to be using some of them, but I tried to hold on to them so that you guys could see what they looked like. And then there were three different kinds of textured sheets. I only held on to one. So, oh, it's storming in Ohio. We're supposed to get the storms tomorrow. And honestly, it's been so, re we cannot get our house to cool off. We just can't. I mean, we did cut down that big tree. Do you guys remember I posted pictures of that ginormous tree that we cut down because it was we were getting our driveway redone? And I know that the whole country is going through a heat wave and actually parts of the world, but that tree has <laughs> been missed very much. So, um, and then there were card bases. I have a couple of them here. Oops, these are the cards. So um, let me show you the cards that Stampin' Up! suggested. I think this one is my favorite. Let me zoom in here. I think that this one is my absolute favorite. I just think it's really cute. And this is exactly the way Stampin' Up! said to do it. And um, it's just so, so cute. So um, here's another one. I like it too. I like all of them. I mean, I, you know, what can I say? And then here is the third one. Also really cute. This is a great guy card. So this paper pumpkin had some great cards and you would make three of each. So even if you just copied them exactly, Stampin' Up's artists are like amazing. But for fun, I like to show you guys alternatives. And I know a lot of people do alternatives. And I'm going to tell you right now, I ran out of product before I, um, oops, sorry, bef before I saw some even more cool projects. Um, so check Pinterest. That's all I'm going to say. Check Pinterest. So um, remember me, I was just talking about um, the subscription program with Paper Pumpkins. So 
somebody pointed this out and and I think it's really important that you guys know this because I want you guys to um, do what's fiscally more responsible for you um, when you sorry I'm trying to get that straightened out I think my camera's crooked anyway when you subscribe as a month to month for subscriptions you will be paying $23.50 plus tax. That includes your shipping. Now, why that's important is because when you buy the six month or the one month at a time bundle, um, not, yeah, I guess that's not a bundle. When you buy just one month because you're thinking, I just want this one month, you're going to pay $22.50 plus $7.95 shipping plus tax. So it never pays to get one month on its own. Um, and I know during celebration, we talk about the three month and the six month and the one year. Um, those are different stories. I'm just talking about the one. So the reason I bring this up is because you can subscribe. You can become a, a Paper Pumpkin subscriber um, on, on my website, memoryanchors.com will take you to my Stampin' Up! website where you can subscribe to Paper Pumpkin as a recurring event. But you can either cancel or put it on hold whenever. You just have to remember to go back in and do one or the other. So I wanted to bring that up because it's a considerable savings, right? I mean, you know, so I just wanted to bring that up before we go any further. Okay, enough said about that. All right, so toss that aside. Let's get started. Again, these were the three that Stampin' Up! suggested. So I am going to, I'm just like moving stuff everywhere. It's crazy. I'm going to start with this one, which is a complete, well, not a complete copy, but it's definitely uh, copied from another demonstrator who I saw this and just thought that is the cutest idea ever. Sorry, I forgot to get my grid paper. Uh, I thought it was just the cutest idea. And so I, I had to copy it because that's what we all do, right? We copy stuff. So for this one, I'm going to use the gray background and, of course, fold that in half. And then these are my notes, so I remember what I was going to do. And then I, I punched out a bunch of stars, and those came from, let me find it. I think it's the Give It a Whirl, which I'm going to be using for another I'm going to be using for another um, card that I'm showing you today. This is a Give It a Whirl die. And, yep, and it, it, it has two of these. So it was really nice because when I wanted to punch them out in two different colors, I was able to do that all at one time. So Give It a Whirl die. You're going to see more of this in a bit. Okay, <clears throat> so punch those out. I popped out the die for the little circle. The little, um, well, this is actually, I think it's the biggest no, it's a middle size bottle. And then some of the linen thread. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take the Wishing You the Best off of this thing. I was going to like pre-mount everything, but then, you know, I'm going to have to keep changing colors and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then with um, Soft Suede, which I know is not part of this quick kit, but you guys have a whole bunch going on. Good morning to you, Kathy. It's afternoon for me, but I know that it's an early Saturday morning for you. So I'm going to stamp that right there. I maybe should have put that a little bit lower, but it's okay. It'll work. And then I am going to take Bermuda Bay, and that's what you get, but I'm just using my big one. I am going to use the little spot later. And I am going to grab these stars that come in the um in the stamp set and the bermuda bay and i am going to stamp them in the bottle and now one of the things you want to if you're doing this let me let me zoom in again sorry about that that's okay if you miss the beginning you can uh watch the replay so don't worry about it you haven't missed much i really just started creating so you're good. So when you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure you stay inside the bottle. Okay. It'll make sense because these are supposed to be inside the bottle. And so you want them to be 
staying in there. So it might take a little finesse to get them how you want them and to stay, like I said, inside the bottle. So there we go. I probably could fit another one right down here. Um, so that is where you can take things like a post-it note or our, um, or our awesome, um, what is this called? Oh uh, gosh, let me look. Cause I want to tell you the truth. Cause it's new. It's a new thing. Uh, masking paper. Gosh, why was that so hard for me? And you could mask it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece where I've already kind of cut and just kind of do like that so that I'm getting that background. And I just want to get this little star here in the corner right there. There. Okay, so that way they all stayed inside the bottle. I'm going to have to clean these stamps in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to set them over there. All right. So now I'm going to... Oh, I forgot I did want to do the little seahorse. So... May as well grab my scrub and spray. I know you can't hear me. Sorry about that, you guys. I just realized other stuff I forgot to grab. So, um, so I'm going to use the little tiny seahorse and I am going to stamp him in her, him, whatever. I'm going to stamp him in the same, um, soft suede, but I'm going to stamp him off and then I'm going to stamp him right there. Okay. Oops. No, I do want that one. I'm going to close this one and stamp him up so I can clean him. Then I'm going to take some of this awesome seagrass and grab a block. And I am going to actually stamp that onto. Now, this is bumpy, so it's going to stamp a little funky. All right. No pun intended. Wow, does that look... I think I need a piece of foam under here. A little mat. So that it, it's photopolymer, so it's always good to have your mat underneath. And my Bermuda Bay is apparently super juicy. Because it's giving me bubbles. Now, the reason I just did that, the reason I re-inked and stamped off is because I only got half of it here. And if I were to um, stamp again, here, let me show you. So, I'll do a little bit right there. All right. Oh, that didn't work. Let me go like that. And then see how only half of it, so when you go, if you were to go to stamp again, it'd be kind of a funky look. So, I'm going to stamp it off, do another backgroundy one just so that I have some seagrass in the background. I'm going to put just a smidgen of the background seagrass on my circle, like so. Then, here's a fun trick for you. I gotta find it, hang on. I've got piles of stuff to show you guys, I'm not kidding. I'm really, really excited about this kit, which, I thought it was really cute when I saw it, but then when I started playing it with it, I really liked it a lot. So, all right. So now this is a this is the piece that's cut out, right? That you pop all your stuff out of. So here we go. I'm gonna set that right on here, like that, and then I am going to take my. Hang on, I gotta. I've got a pile of uh, ink pads over here too because I've been playing like crazy and I just kind of want it to be subtle I'm not going to have it as dark as it is on here I'm going to take the um, polished pink and I am going to you know you don't want to rub this because of you know the way these things are they're gonna they're gonna want to tear and everything and you don't want that 
So I'm just doing a kind of a, a subtle background. And when you see me pull, I'm pulling in the direction um, so that it doesn't move those too much because otherwise it really messes it up. Now, if you have temporary adhesive, you could put that on the back, but it's still kind of, I have a little bit on the back of this, but it's still kind of hard. I want it really dark down here. It's still kind of hard to get it on all of these little pieces. All right, so let's see how I did. Cool, right? Isn't that cool? So, oh shoot, I got a little bit right there. That's okay, I'm gonna cover it up. I'll find a way to cover it up. You know why? Because I didn't pay attention to the hole in the bird. It's my fault. Okay, so um, now what I'm gonna do is, this is the trick that I, I'm not, I did not want to do this on camera. Oh my gosh. This kit, I'm sorry, Kathy, I just thought of that. This kit is the paper pumpkin kit that you had to order by the 10th of July. So if you're interested in this, the new one that's coming up, you're going to want to do that by the 10th of August. And it's going to be pretty awesome. So anyway, you're going to take your X-Acto knife and you're going to carefully cut along these waves. Okay, see, I already did that because I knew I did not want to do that while you guys were watching me. So that's done with that. I didn't take the blade off because when I was doing it, I cut myself. Just a poke, but it was enough to like, you know, those little tiny dots that like seem like they bleed all of your blood right out of your system. It was one of those. So now what I'm gonna do is, and if you're wondering why my um, linen thread is like this, I didn't use the one on the roll. I'm still using up some of my um, prior linen threads that were wrapped around cardstock. So it, it kind of gave it that bend, which um, stinks, but there it is. So I'm just gonna wrap this around. I'm not putting an adhesive on the back of it this time because I don't want it to be sticky. And then I'm just going to tie a knot, maybe. Maybe if my fingers allow such a thing, I will tie a knot. So, hang on. Just remember when you're tying a knot on a paper project, you might want it to be tight, but you don't want to get too carried away and tear your paper. Especially in a kit like this, when um, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be refills available, but you know, they're not available immediately, so. Okay, so now I have that, and I'm just gonna trim that off just a bit. I like them long, but we're gonna still trim that off just a bit. Now watch this. Now my bottle will be floating. How cute, right? And there's enough words showing that they'll know they need to pull that out. Now this is gonna be a problem because I was not gonna put my, my circle right there, but I'm gonna now, so. Let me move this out of my way and I'm going to take my my circle and my adhesive now you've got glue dots for your um, in in your kit but I want to make sure I don't close that up so I'm going to make sure I don't put any glue like up in this corner so I'm going to grab that part and just put it right there so that when I put it down it's, I could have used Stampin' Dimensionals. I just want to cover up that one little bit of pink. So, there we go. Just a little bit. It shows just a smidgen, but I'm not going to worry about it. Then, I'm just going to add some of these stars on there, just because they are freaking fun, right? Slide that one over. There's a little teeny tiny one. And, oops, that's a little too much. Grab that. Do you guys do this? When you have too much, you just grab another thing you know you need to adhere and stick it on there. I do it all the time. So, and these are random. I'm not worrying about where they go or how they end up. Um, and these stars are stitched. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they are, and I just think that's the coolest. I love it. Oop. 
Uh, don't stick to my finger, stick to the card. And these might have been cool, um, these, little, these little things up on the dimensionals. You get enough dimensionals that you could certainly do that. I just chose not to for this card. No particular reason. So now I've got that fun little look here. You could put a sentiment on here. I think maybe it could use with the stars to be moved. Someone is calling me. Do you not know that I'm doing a live? It's someone named Gloria. So <laughs> I guess I'll have to call her back. So there we go. All right. Now I am going to fold my card in half. Oh, no, I was going to put that on here, wasn't I? I am. So now what I want to be careful of when I adhere this is to stay away from the bottle, right? I don't want that bottle to get any juiciness. I'm going to push it up a little bit just to ensure for safety reasons that I don't glue it in there. Okay, I'm not going to put any glue here. You could, I just don't want to risk it running down. And then, like I said, gluing that bottle in place. So then there. Isn't it funny how sometimes when you put it on like it's finished product, like so, it just seems to like make everything better. So there you go. Um, I think this needs a little something, but I didn't have my drawing in front of me of how I laid out the stars, and I think that was the problem. I think I had more stars up in here. Plus, this was down lower because I didn't make a mistake in my head when I was doing this one. So anyway, isn't that fun? And it's a great way to use these. In fact, let me show you a card that I did on a piece of basic white where I used these pieces to stamp these images on here and then I just added the little things and it's it's fairly flat now if you're gonna look at this little bird uh, I think it's a seagull probably um, I outlined it in a basic gray with the pen which you guys have seen me do a few times just to give him more dimension to him and then this has Wink of Stella on it so I wanted you guys to see fun way to use your stencil pieces I mean you could still do it with the birds and the seahorse and all of it. it it's just fun so I wanted to be sure you guys saw that so there's one card you set that aside I'm gonna refer back to these so I don't want them to go too far all right so now this one I have my notes on. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I don't know why I stuck it in. Oh, I stuck it in a regular envelope because I'm using basic white. Now, this is when I was practicing. I used the back of that piece. But I am going to show you what it looks like finished. Now, what I did was, because like I said, I only had so many of these pieces so I couldn't like have extras around to show you. I took the um, Stampin' Spot in the Bermuda Bay and Pacific Point and on the other side I just ran it across like that to get dimension. And then I used some of the white but look what happened to this. Isn't that pretty? And I used the I use the craft white also which I'm gonna see if I can replicate can you see how nice that looks I mean that just looks like the splash of the wave and it was just an accident and um, so I'm gonna see if I can get that to replicate in another spot but you know when it's an accident it's really hard to do it again uh, which I'm finding now so but I just rubbed it across to try and get some of the lines to be more white. Isn't that fun though? And I also tried to get these, um, and they do stand out more, the little clouds, but they're a little bit harder. I actually sort of um, curved the um, piece 
to try and get it to just touch that bumped up piece because I didn't want to get white in any other places. But you can see it, I don't know how well you can see it, but it did add a little bit more white to that cloud. Those clouds, all of it sort of disappears, in my opinion, when it's the fresh main piece without any addition. So that's how I did that. And then I wanted you guys to see... I stamped the boat. I actually did it in the soft suede, but and then I hand cut it out. I know, like super fussy cut, right? Crazy insane. Um, but I wanted you guys to see what I did for this because I wanted it to kind of blend into the background. So I took some balmy blue, squeeze it up. I may have put a drop in there. Yeah, I put a drop. So, um, then I just took my blender pen and I, I lightened it up and then I just went along everywhere where it was going to show through. Now I took more time obviously for that one, but you get the idea. I just wanted to get some of the, the water showing, oh that shouldn't have been painted, um, where it was going to, like where you would see the sea through the, through the boat. Oh that's like really dark. So. <laughs> Definitely had too much ink on that. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. This this is why I do stuff in advance. So you guys don't have to see me screw up too much. Uh, you guys see it enough. Thank you very much. So now, let me look at my notes so I can figure out what I was going to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. I know what I'm doing now. All right, so then I grabbed... The Happiness of Bounds, and I have the stamp on it. Uh oh. And I grabbed the Happy Birthday stamp, which I stuck to the front of this so it would be easy. Oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. Yay. This is good. All right. So now I have the Happy Birthday from Happiness of Bounds. Because I just didn't want to, um, I didn't want to use the same message on every single card. And I know you guys have plenty, um, <laughs> I like that, Kathy. Yes, it's only on purposes. Um, but I know you guys have a lot of sentiments, so I wanted to be able to be sure I did that. And then I'm going to grab the Pacific Point, which is, it seems odd, but there's Pacific Point after what I've done, right? So again... I need my foam mat because these are photopolymer. And this is normally where I would grab my Stamparatus to make sure that um, I'm doing this straight. But, you know, winging it works too. And I'm going to set it off towards the dovetail. So then I've got the happy birthday on there. It's straight enough for me. I hope it's straight enough for you. And then I am going to take some more of the Baker's Twine linen thread, sorry, linen thread. And see, I have, this is how long I've had this. I, I used to buy so much of it because I just really, really liked it. So I have a lot of it. So I'm a, I want to put this on the back of this, but this time I'm not going to tie it in a knot. I'm just going to wind it around. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of my um, stamp and seal or you could use tear and tape on the back just to hold the ribbon while I wrap it as much as I think I want to wrap it and I'm just going to because you know rope and boat stuff just goes together right it's just they use a lot of them I don't know that they still do I don't, I don't think it's actual rope rope anymore on like fancy new boats but what do I know? I haven't been out on my yacht in some time. <laughs> so you guys get the idea. And you can go crazy and go all the way to the end. But I'm not going to go to the end because I am not going to use this whole piece. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put this on with Stampin' Dimensionals. I grabbed my black ones just because that's what came out of my little box here. And I'm going to set them on there, and then hopefully I have, here's a little half piece that I'm going to just tear off. Ooh, terrible job. 
stick that down on there. Oops, I don't think I want that there. I don't, so we'll just put it there since I opened it. And take these off. Now normally I tell you if you're gonna put something dimensional to, to put the base on your card first, but because I know I want to trim this off, I didn't want to do that. So, oh look, I have a tail. We have to get rid of the tail because I don't want that to show. There we go. And I am going to set this off like so. Then I can turn it over and I can cut it even. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So like that. Now I can put it, and with liquid adhesive, liquid adhesive it's not as bad to do that because you're not going to be pressing down with like the um, stamp and seal or any other tape dispenser roller type thing. I just, I love, love, love the way this came out. I love it. I just noticed I didn't fold my card even, so I'm going to have to trim it afterwards. So there's that, and then I'm going to put my boat up on dimensionals also. And it's not super fancy. It doesn't have a lot of, you know, bling. You could add bling to it, but I just don't think that it needs it. But it's a personal preference thing. You know, normally I like to bling stuff up, but... You know, and guys are okay with bling, but they don't always have to have it, I don't think. I don't think I want him right there. I think I want to move him over. Let's see if it will let me. If I go carefully, I didn't press too hard yet. Okay, I'm going to move him over so he's more in the center of the card. There we go. There we go. So what do you think? Do you guys like it? I hope you guys like it. Um, but I just thought this was just a fun way to really highlight those waves, and it gave them a lot of movement, especially when I added the Craft White ink over it. Oh, I just love it. It's, it's one of my favorites. I know it's pretty simple, but I just really like it. Okay, so there's that card. Move these envelopes out of my way. Then I've already used that, so I can move that. All right, so now we're going to go on to the fancy card. Oh, good, I'm glad that you liked that. Um, before I get on, well, I'll do these last. I have more cards to show you guys uh, that, I, that I made um, that I wasn't going to make with you. This card uses um, the 2022-2024 in color designer series paper. Um, I just, you'll see in just a minute, which I cut out using these uh, deckled framelits, which I think that's what they're called. Yep, deckled, deckled rectangular dies. Um, these have been around for, um, well, as a demonstrator for a while. Um, and I didn't think I needed them because I have rectangles. I have stitched rectangles. I have rectangle rectangles, you know, <laughs> but I like them. So I had to have them. So I wanted to show you those. So, and then these are my notes so that I remember what I'm doing. And here are my pieces. Okay. So I use the, what did I do with it? Remember me showing you them? There they are. I knew I showed them. So this is an often overlooked die set it doesn't um i don't i think once upon a time it matched with something but um i don't know that there's an actual matching item for it now and i pre-cut stuff out um just so you guys could see so this the way this worked was i took off this piece and i cut it out of uh, this piece came with the kit okay there's a little bit of texture to it so I cut that out and notice how it stitches and it also punches this little hole so after you punch that out then you pick what you want see the little circle here that's to line up so you pick what one you want I used this one like so and it 
and it also is stitched. So when I punched it out, all I did was I lined it up with the hole and decided where I wanted it to be. You could put it anywhere on your card. You can put it anywhere. I mean, you can't put it here because that's where your um, spinner is going to go. And then, and this is the piece that came out of it. I just didn't throw it away because you know me. I might decide I want to do something with it. I don't know. Now I don't know where that one was. Okay, so that is what this spinner one is. And this is also where I got the stars from. There's clouds here. There's little circles. Look at that. Three different stitch clouds. I mean, there's so many little pieces to this that even if you don't want to do the, um, the what is it called? Give it a whirl. You're going to love this anyway. I mean, look at that deckle. It's deckled and then scalloped. And then you've got the heart. And you've just got a ton with this die set. It's very cool. Little arrows. Little arrows that will actually punch into, not cut out, but like make punch marks. Like I could have taken this and, and put this on here so that people would know how to spin or put it on the circle. I didn't, but I could. But anyway, that's the Give It A Whirl dies. And they're very, very, very awesome. Even if I do say so myself. Now, here's where the trick comes in. And I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm waiting to see if it's visual. There we go. You can kind of faintly see when this one gets cut out. It kind of makes little dented marks. Kind of lets you know where it's going. But I um, decided I wanted to be sure of where I was going. So I'm going to line these up. And I'm just going to put a very light pencil mark on each spot. Whoops. And then, and then I would have to go in and erase them. So I'm only really worried about this first one, I think. I think, I think, I think. So this is where I am going to use the same sentiment that I used before. Let me grab my cleaner. Hang on. My mist and my scrub. There we go. All right. So I am going to stamp that in. Well, I guess I didn't really need to clean it because I'm going to do it in the um, soft suede. Just this one sentiment in the soft suede. And then I'm just going to line it up. Hang on. I have to make sure I'm seeing this right. It's so hard when I can't stick my face right on top of it to know for sure. There we go. All right, so now I've got the wishing you all the best. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to erase these lines. I have to be careful here because it looks like the Y didn't go right where I wanted it to. But it'll be okay. You're going to see it's going to be fine when I go to spin it. Okay, so then I am going to put the starfish, which I did. I'm going to do the starfish in. Now, this is where I could have done it in another color. I'm going to do it in crushed curry, but it's not going to look very yellow when I do this because it's going on top of this, um, this, this, this is pool party. Let me look. I'm trying to remember what I used. I think it's pool party. I don't know now. And then I'm not going to worry about this too much going off the edges. I'm just, I'm just not worried about it. It's even okay if it goes onto the little circle. Don't really want it to go in here. So... I'm going to take that and cover that up. There we go. So now I have a bunch of stars on that one. The thing you have to remember is you have to keep spinning it if you've got something that's going to go a certain way. You want to definitely watch where you're spinning. The other thing you can do to mat it off is use the back, which is what I'm going to do for this one. And line that up 
and I'm going to grab my seagrass again. Hang on, things are sticking to me. And I'm going to use my Bermuda Bay. There we go. Not worried about it being perfect. And then um, I'm going to put the little seahorse in there also. Again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, only this time I'm going to do him in full strength. Remember, I stamped him off, but this time he's going to be full strength. So there's my little seahorse. Now I can see that I could use a little more grass right there. But just a little. I don't want to get too carried away, right? There we go. So now those are my designs. They look a little funky and weird, I know. But uh, this is what we're doing here. This one's a little harder to conceptualize while you're staring at it. Now, you can see here I took one of our little brads. We sell that um, pack of the, the circle and square brads. And I'm taking the brad and my um, Bermuda Bay blends marker. This is the dark one. And I'm just going to color the tip of it because I kind of want it to blend in with the stripe. See how it's right on the stripe? I don't think I would have worried about it too much if that circle had ended up on the lighter color. But because it's on this darker one and you want to kind of spin around the edges. And there you go. You should probably give this a minute to dry. But, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. It dries pretty quick though, actually. So I'm gonna see how it almost disappears in there? You almost don't even see it. Then I am going to set this on there and then see how it will spin. And when you press this down, don't press it down super tight. You don't want it super tight because you want it to be able to spin freely. So now you can use the Stampin' Dimensionals that came in the kit, or if you have the awesome foam adhesive strips, which I love, these are great for shaker boxes or just when you wanna lift up a large piece. Also, they're a little bit thicker than the Dimensionals, so they're going to give you a little bit more oomph. So, Hang on, these are getting kind of time to clean my scissors over here. They're getting a little sticky. So I'm gonna put that right there and then another piece right there. And then and you wanna make sure you stay clear of the mechanism. That's really, really important that you stay away from the mechanism. Here. This is like watching paint dry. Hi Susan, don't worry about being late. You can re-watch it later. I am, if you just tuned in anybody else, I am doing the, the paper pumpkin that should be just now arriving for subscribers. I'm just doing a couple of alternatives. So, there we go. Love these things. Okay. So this Give It A Whirl die is just, you. there's so many things you can do with it. I mean, I'm doing it with this, and I honestly don't think I did that great of a job now that I'm looking at where they ended up go showing through the window. I'm not really happy with my design. <laughs> oh, well, that's how it goes. But, you know, it was worth it to try it. I still think it's fun. And then my card base, I guess I don't need that right now. My card base is the Dark Bermuda Bay one. It came in the kit. And again, this piece came in the kit too. I just die cut it. Now I, I want to set this on here, but I need to, and I forgot to do this before I put those down. I need to mark right there with a pencil 
because I like to make it a little bit easier for people to spin it. They'll be able to spin it, but I want to move some of this away. So I grabbed, this is retired now, but it's a one and a quarter inch punch. Certainly you could use one of our awesome dies, would work. But I'm just going to stick this in there, find my pencil marks, there they are. Lighting is not good for finding pencil marks. And then just pop that away. Now, is that that's going to leave a little, you know, a little white piece. If you're really worried about that, glue that down. You know, I'm not, because then I don't want it right there. I mean, you can, but I, I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so now I can put this down. onto the card front like so and see now it's easier to spin so um, when you mail it you can leave it right there and then let them do their thing so now this is one of the the dies that are popped out and I am going to put some liquid adhesive on there and grab my silicone sheet so I can glue that down. Where is it? There it is. And don't want to lose everything. I just lost the cap to my glue. So just put some dots on it. Don't get excited. <clears throat> don't uh, try not to squish like that. Looks a little deep to me. So I'm going to pull some of that off. And I think, you know, most people don't have the problems that I do when I'm squeezing bottles. It doesn't matter what bottle I'm doing. I'm either not squeezing hard enough or I squeeze it so hard that I get like a pool of adhesive. It's a learning thing and you'd think after 21 plus years I would be beyond that. But I'm not always learning. So um, I want to remind you guys also about TLC so that's my new thing that I'm doing. Um, whenever you put in a $50 or more product order, you're going to get a three card kit. Um, you're gonna get the guts and, and consumables for my three card kit. Then I will do a, um, a live video, which will be saved so you can watch it anytime with those items. So now I wanna put this so it doesn't glue somewhere I don't want it to. Okay. And then I'm going to use a Stampin' Dimensional on my little seahorse. If I can find them. Where are my white ones? Here they are. So I'm going to put a whole one. No, these are, these needed tiny, tiny dimensionals. So I think I'm going to go down here and just snip, snip. And get these halvesies in here. I don't know, his head is really tiny. So I might snip this one. Like so. Do you guys do that? I think I asked you guys that, but I don't remember if I got answers. You guys snip up your um, dimensionals even though you've got all the different sizes. I do. I make them fit what I want them to fit on. So, let's see. Ay, yeah, yeah. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this is a longer than normal um, Saturday sip, but I thought it would be fun for you guys to, to see some fun stuff with Paper Pumpkin. And um, I don't remember if I ever showed this, this, uh, this spinny thing. Why can I never remember what it's called? I'm going to set that so it looks like it's resting right there. Uh, give it a whirl. That's the name of the dies that I used. And I just think they are awesome. Especially, like, you could do, like, different words in it. Um, think about it for, like, an invitation. You're invited. Spin. This is when. This is why. Could be really fun. So, there you go. There's that card. And again, the wheel will spin to give them different pictures inside. So it spins pretty good. 
especially when you put it up on the um, the uh, dimensional strips. Why am I why am I having so much trouble remembering the names of stuff? My husband and I blame COVID for everything. Yes, I use the outline pencils. They're awesome. Uh, foam adhesive strips. That's what I use to, to pop that up with. So those are my alternatives. Let me show you a couple more. I just gotta gotta grab the cap to my glue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom back down to normal size in just a minute. So here's another one that I made with it. Instead of the boat, I put in a floating thing with some starfish inside. There's one. This is up on dimensionals. And then this is the one I told you I cut out with the decal um, in the designer series paper. And then this was just using sponges. I cut this out of basic white. It's also deckled. I'm thinking you guys can see that it's also deckled. Let me put my, well, that doesn't work. Let me stick this under there. Can you see how the edge is deckled? And then I just used sponges to get the coloring that I wanted for what the boat was going to be on. And then this is just the in color um, uh, baker's twine that matches the designer series paper. So I'm gonna, I'm going to come back down if it will let me and straighten everything out. And then I will show you all of the projects that we made today so you guys can have a better look at them. If you want to do screenshots, you can do that too. So I feel like I've forgotten something, but I don't, I don't think I did. I was going to do another one just exactly like I did my favorite one with my leftover pieces, but it's in the directions. So, and I've kept you guys kind of long for a Saturday. So let's start with the Stampin' Up! original designs. So it's this beautiful one, my favorite one. So again, while we're looking at my banner, this is where you go shopping, memoryinkers.com. That is my Stampin' Up! website. Memoryinkers at gmail.com is my email. If you're shopping and it's under $150, be sure to use my hostess code. 2, T is in Tom, 6, J is in Jack, X is in X-ray, P is in Paul, R is in Robert, B is in Bob. Or there is a link always at the top, um, just so you guys know. Um, at the top of this page. If you scroll up, there's a pin post. So again, these are the three really pretty cards that Stampin' Up! had for us to do. And then my renditions of cards. Let's see, I'll put that there. And then there's another one. And then there's another one. So got a lot of ships. I think that ship is so pretty and I love how it came out when I colored it like that. I just think it looks really cool. So um, hopefully you guys can see all of these cards. Not sure you can, but um, let me, I know what I can do. Oh, there's more. There's more, but wait, there's more. There we go. And this is the spinny one, just so you guys remember why that one looks the way it does. So there you go. Uh, what white ink pad? Um, okay, mine looks really old, but it's the it's the Stampin' Up um, Craft White. It is. Let me see if I can find it in the catalog. Let me uh, let me see if I can get my catalog out of my little drawer here without knocking my light. Yeah, I did it. So it's going to be in the back. Let's see if it tells me going to be here somewhere. Just give me a, just a minute to find it for you. I know it's here. Here it is. Um, where is it? There it is. Number four, craft stamping pad. Let me zoom in. Craft stamping pad. It is nine dollars and fifty cents and four fifty for a refill. And the refill is the little um, bottle. 
okay? Is there something different about it? Yes, it is um, pigment. It's a pigment ink pad. And yours is going to look like um, it's going to be in the new style. It's just that there's, I, you guys know, I have a lot of my old pads and I just keep them because they still work. So um, I did not replace all my colors just because the pad changed. <laughs> there's a limit. <laughs> okay, so um, that is what I used for the white. So there you guys go. I hope you guys liked this. Um, oh, I didn't put this one up there. This is the one that pulls out. So I wish I could remember the name of the demonstrator. I thought I wrote it down, but I've been looking everywhere and I couldn't find it. But hers is different than mine, but it's really, really similar. Um, I'll just be honest. You know, just like when you guys, I hope you guys copy some of my stuff. You know, and it's may or may not be similar. That's fine. And then this is the one that I did completely with those um, background pieces. So there you go. Those are my paper pumpkin alternatives for the um, July, the, well, I guess it's the June kit. And um, I will, of course, again, do more for you guys next month. And um, if you would please share this video and then post below comment below that you shared for my drawing next month and if you are watching this from a shared post or from my Facebook page where I will upload this um, if you want to see me live it's at facebook.com forward slash memory inkers so um, have a great rest of your weekend you guys if you are like us here in Michigan we're excited to be getting some rain, but it is so stinking humid. My house will not cool off. I think I said that at the beginning. I just can't get it to cool off. So um, anyway, have a blessed and wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys. Bye.